Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can find the show online at buildingthefutureshow.com or follow me on Twitter at Building Show. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. Welcome back. Today on the show, we have Luke Havard. He's a managing director of Decentis Group. He's an advisor, an impact investor, a board member, and a connector of ordinary people. Luke, welcome to the show. Cool. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Awesome. I'm excited to have you. We recently just connected on social media and now, you know, a couple of weeks later, we're doing this. So I'm excited. So maybe we can start off a little bit with your background and kind of where you grew up. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, so I'm, fr and I still am, as it happens, I'm from a little place uh, called Hereford. Um, you know, that, that's where like the tumbleweed now, everyone's like, where? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's in the UK. Um, it's in England, to be more precise, in, in um, uh, the West Midlands, which is, as it sounds, it's in the west of the middle of the land. Um, so it's about three to four hours away from London. Um, it's an hour and a half from Birmingham, which is another kind of major city, uh, five hours away from Manchester. Uh, it's it's a very small place, but it's famous for a couple of very unique things. It has um, – we grow cider here, so cider apples. Oh, okay. We, I, we, I do we, love we, my cider. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd like it here. It's like they call it like pond water and things like that because it's so – it can be so strong if they – you know, if you home brew it and stuff like that. Right. Um, and we're also – uh, famous for having, you know, and obviously I, we are biased, but it, it's said to be the, one of the most elite sort of um, fighting forces in the world, um, which is called the SAS. Uh, so it's a, it's a branch of the, the British Special Services um, Army, and uh, they're based here. So literally I grew up and, you know, it was a stone's throw away from my house, the, be the base. So it, it when you, and I was out with a couple, uh, well, my brother-in-law, my wife, and friends on um saturday and we went to a place which is frequented by this type of person and you can spot them a mile away you know they look like they could kill you with a spoon <laughs> <laughs> and you know they're lovely people but you just don't want to cross them in a million sundays sure um so yeah that's that's where i grew up it's not really doesn't really have much else going on but that um and uh yeah i, I just uh uh, went to went to school, went to high school, did all that sort of stuff, and um, it kind of started to spiral out of control when I went to high school. Got in with the wrong crowd. Um, I would say that you know when I think about intelligence, I you know I don't I think that the way the school system is set up doesn't really help. Um, it doesn't give a, a a good measurement of of intelligence, and it doesn't help people flourish. Yeah, and I agree with you. Work. It absolutely didn't work for me. I didn't kind of tick the boxes. I didn't fit in any boxes, in fact. Um, so I, people, on the surface, it looked like I wasn't academic at all, like I was a bit of a dunce. Um, I just kind of was more um, used to use my hands, and I preferred to kind of do stuff that was outside of the classroom. Sure. Uh, I just couldn't sit still. And so they thought there was stuff wrong with me. They said, well, he must have a t a, an attention disorder. He must have some kind of... Um, Hyperactivity, hyperactivity disorder, or something like that. They try to put all the labels on me, um, and I, you know, I had counselling, had therapy, and they couldn't find anything wrong. They thought, and so um, when it came to like my final year of school, I ended up getting kicked out, um, and I got into college by the skin of my teeth, and that's where I found drugs and alcohol, and I kind of went on this journey from there of. Um, just experimenting and exploring with anything I could get my hands on. Right. Um, and, you know, a couple of years later, I got addicted to it. Uh, and to, and I say it because it wasn't just one particular drug. I, I just have an addictive personality. So I was trying anything and everything. And um, I, I had really low self-esteem because I think, you know, the kind of problems I had experienced going to school and not fitting in and not, you know, ticking the right boxes. I felt like I was a failure. Sure. So I was overcompensating and trying to find myself in drugs and alcohol. I got into football violence, which for those who don't understand uh, what football violence is, you know, football as in soccer, um, there's a group of people who would be known as soccer fans and they don't even typically like to watch the game. They'd rather fight other fans. Um, oh. So I was kind of on the fringe of that and I knew all the kind of head guys within our local area who were involved in that. And it can be brutal. I mean, it can be a very um, kind of dangerous place to be in, you know. Sure, I can imagine. I mean, that's, 
that's linked to drug drug dealing and, and various other um, dark things. So, as you can imagine, I, I was kind of embroiled in this drug um, drink fueled um, chaos. And um, you know, I think when you get into one uh, situation, you know, it leads to another, and you have a problem with that person, you have a problem with their friends, their their family, and and when you live in a small place as well, trouble has a habit of catching up with you. Sure. So. By the time I was 19, 20, I mean, I was uh, lying in my bed every night with a baseball bat next to me. I had a machete by the front door. I was I was ready for anything, you know? And oh, I didn't wow. Really, I didn't really sleep too well. I, you know, I was paranoid constantly, you know, from the drugs and, and had kind of things ready to catch up with me. So I have a pretty colorful past. Sure. No, that, yeah. So how did you get clean? Well, um, and, and I would say this to anyone listen i did an interview yesterday and i gave a similar you know had a similar question i'll sure. give similar advice you've got, really got to cut off you know your environment because it, it really comes down to environment i believe environment always trumps willpower mm-hmm. you know don't try and be a hero and say i can do this i can fight through this when you're surrounded by people who are going hey do you want to do some more gear do you want to you know go out and drink again it's only nine in the morning but hey you know if you're around those people you, sooner or later you're going to fall Sure. And so I, um, I think basically people were just sick and tired of having me around. So my family basically paid me off and said, look, we'll give you some money. We'll give you uh, some inheritance your grandfather left. You just get the heck out of here. So I, went out, I, I, I looked on the map and I said, where's the furthest place away from England? And, it, and Australia is pretty far. <laughs> sure. So I hopped, hopped on a plane to Australia and decided to reinvent myself whilst I sat on the plane. I can be, you know, the cool backpacker guy. I'm not aggressive or, or violent in any way, shape or form. And, you know, I, I got out to Australia and I went, tried to kind of look like a surfer and try to do all this stuff. And, and um, for a while, people kind of, you know, thought I was pretty cool, I think, until I, you know, found somebody who was similar to the people I was friends with back home. And, and I spiraled back into taking drugs and I, I moved into a red light district in Sydney called King's Cross and um, the onslaught of uh, addiction and, and chaos just ensued. So um, I was there one day and I think I'd done like three or four days straight without sleeping. Oh, wow. Um, you know, clubbing from this club to that club, you know, uh, lots of women, lots of drink, lots of drugs and, and fast things happening. And I, I don't know if you've ever been through this or you know people who've been through this, but I feel like, you know, we can keep searching for that next buzz. Sure. You know? We're searching for something. We don't really know what we're, we're searching. Oftentimes, I think, for an experience. Sure. And we think that if I get that experience, then I'll be fulfilled. And you get that next high and, it, you know, you're looking for the next high. And you look, you know, you get that one accomplishment or you achieve that big thing you thought you wanted and you're looking for the next big thing. And so I got to that place where I thought, man, if this is all there is, I'm screwed. You know, sure. I've done it all and I'm not happy. I'm, I'm really quite, uh, you know, depressed. And I, I used to kind of, um, people didn't want to s- stick around with me for long when they figured out who I really was. <laughs> I got <laughs> you. Thought, this guy is uh, out of control and, you know, he's just ruining his life. And so, uh, you know, after everyone had kind of abandoned me and people had given up on me and I was kind of on my own and I just was, you know, basically going around on my own, I thought, you know, what, I'm going to end my life. Cause oh, wow. there's, you know, there's not really much point you know, continuing this way. And so I was, I was literally there in a red light district about to commit suicide. And, um, I don't know what you believe, uh, Kevin, but I had this profound encounter with God. Okay. And people are like, what? Like, you know, it sounds a bit out there, but that's, that's, you know, really what happened. And, you know, I wasn't that wasted that I could, you know, make that up. Uh, and from that kind of really kind of profound moment where I was, you know, contemplating suicide, just felt like I was at the end of my tether. I felt like, you know, it was, it wasn't like a hocus pocus woo woo kind of experience. It was really powerfully profound. And it felt like, you know, God was talking in my heart and said, Hey dude, do you want to live or die? Because you know, you can make a choice. And if you want to live the door, you know, I'll open a door for you and you can, you know, step through it and change your life. If you want to go, you can also step through that door too. And so I decided to kind of give life another shot. And I knew in that moment, I just felt this strength that I could do it. I could break mm-hmm. through my addictions and I could overcome it. Well, that's awesome. Um, I didn't know how. I mean, it was weird. I was like battling in my mind. Going, yeah, but this is just oh, this is just some kind of wishful thinking. I've never been able to do it before. But I just knew I just had to do it. And I had to give it a shot. And I knew that that moment it was all in. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so I like, literally like walked away from that situation and um, found people who could help me. In Australia um, still? 
Yes, in Australia. Okay. Yeah, I, I literally I walked in, actually into a church, um, in a massive church called Hillsong in, in Australia, and um, in that moment I still was going, oh, I don't know if I can do this, but you know I just had to commit to kind of saying, you know, if this is really what just happened in this moment, and I really just had this, you know, encounter, then I'm gonna gonna go with it. And literally, I I was supposed to go to rehab, but they never called me. It was really weird. Never had any interaction with them, but never went to drugs again. Never from that day. Just just went sober. Uh, I didn't drink for five years. Just oh, wow. didn't drink. Uh, I, I have a little drink now, and and I think it just comes down to being aware. It's the environment again. You know, you put yourself around the right people. You, they're gonna, you know, they'll have one or two, and you you know how to kind of control yourself. Um, but yeah, in that in that moment, I had to cut off all those people that I was around. The practicality was, well, I'm in a red light district. You can pretty much get anything and do anything you want here. Sure. I should probably start avoiding certain people and cut certain people out of my life. And so I did. I just looked at everything I was doing and what was happening. And I said, right, you know, I'm going to have to change this and change that and start spending time with people I want to be like. Um, and so I did. I found mentors. I found people who were successful, who were more successful than I was. And I started to learn from them. And I started to mimic them and watch their behavior. And, you know, what did they say? How did they speak? How did they think? So how and, did you uh, find these people? Well, again, a lot of them were through church. Okay. But, you know, again, it was just I'm uh, – I will sit on the train or a bus or anywhere in an airport and I will study people. Okay. So if I see someone who's interesting, I'll just connect with them and say, hey, what are you doing here today? And just introduce myself. You know, I'm the crazy guy on the tube who introduces himself <laughs> to people. But I, I think everyone thinks that you, you people are going to think you're weird. But I think if you do it in the right way, people just think, okay, you know, you seem pleasant enough. You don't seem crazy. And I've met people in bars in, in wherever and I've built, you know, lifelong connections with them. So basically just and, being social. Yeah, for sure. You know, you you don't you don't know unless you ask, right? You you don't get unless you ask. So, I've um, you know I, I think I can't remember every time every circumstance, but I might have just met someone you know whilst I was training in the gym. Sure. And I'd say, hey, look, you know, what do you do? And blah blah blah. And they say, oh, like, I run this company. Great, that sounds amazing. And they say, hey, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm actually looking for work at the moment. They say, why don't you come and do some work for me? And that you know, I just find myself in these situations. Um, and I think as time goes on, you get better at spotting who a person is. Sure. So, you know, they say never judge a book by its cover. And I agree with that. But also, I think once you get good at discerning who people are, you can, you know, almost predict who someone is. Right. And I think after talking to them for, for a, a few minutes, I can almost assess who someone is, where they're from, what they're thinking, you know, their their whole lifestyle. It, it, you know, and, and, you know, as I will we'll probably allude to, I've since been like coaching and, and advising people and businesses for the last 10 years and um so this you know, is that, with the Centus group maybe we'll cover how do you how you got into that and what that is exactly yeah no this isn't through this wasn't historically through the census group but we we are doing that now um do you want me to go into um you know how i got into the coaching side of things sure yeah so uh, what happened was uh, when i once i got myself sober i I can't remember. I actually didn't go for, for myself as it happened, but I bumped into someone who was um, running a rehab. Okay. And, you know, well, I'm from this background. Maybe I can help out. And it was probably quite a risky idea, actually, if I think about it, because I could have got back into it. But the the way they led this um, this operation was so different. It wasn't like, you know, in the UK or I don't know what they do in um, Canada or the States, but usually in rehabs they give they, they might give them something else to um to wean them off a drug right whereas this place was tough love so it's like hey uh we're not gonna let you destroy your life so um you're gonna we're gonna kind of really be tough on you and we're not gonna allow you to do certain things but we're gonna care for you and we're gonna nurture you and we're gonna help you through these the, the ups and downs of withdrawals or whatever it is you're going through and so I just watched these people. I'm like, wow, that's incredible. They're like world class at helping people get breakthroughs. I mean, you know, they were getting like 18, 90% success rate. Oh, wow. That's um, really high. Yeah, exactly. And the, but the, they were tough and they wouldn't just let up and they wouldn't give up on people. They refused. And the guy who ran it was an ex debt collector kind of, um, you know, gangster. And he'd been through all that himself. And he, I think once you've been through something, you know how hard it is. And you, sure. you've got this different perspective. You know that it's possible, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, so I saw people who had come through the other side. I'd come through the other side just, but I knew that it was possible. So I would just say, look, I am not the most educated. I haven't got all the qualifications. I don't know the science behind this, but I know that you can break through. Right. And here's what I did. Here's what I thought when I was doing that. And here's who I spoke to when I was feeling like that. 
And so I just helped out. I volunteered, got really good at it, came back to the UK and um, kind of looked for work in a similar um, sector. And I got into helping families who had, you know, dysfunctional relationships or other drug addicts and um, alcoholics or um, young people who were suffering from like homelessness, addiction or worklessness. You know, they were okay. There's there's a whole, uh, you know, across the world we have the same issues, but there's a, a generational worklessness issue here in the UK. Sure. Like I'm sure you have it in in the states and Canada and various other places, but basically you know there's third generation fourth generation that you've never worked and i got contracts from the government to help get those individuals back into work which is no um small feat sure and you've got well you're like well why should i work i don't have to the government give us money right um but it, it's kind of learning how to communicate in such a way that creates this rapport and connection with someone where they feel like i want to be like you right you know like if you have this mindset that working is good and it's good for me to work and that and you believe i can do it or well, maybe i can right because no, I, totally. realized, I realized no one really wants to be unemployed i don't think people really want that people don't really want to be struggling people want to thrive but if you're afraid that you can't do it or you just don't believe you can then sometimes it's easier just to not try so you don't disappoint yourself yeah and then you know at least you you think like well i'm not trying so that's why i'm failing instead of trying and failing right yeah like that kind of concept yeah, yeah, because you're choosing to fail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you're not failing because you tried. You're choosing. You're, you're, so it's actually a, a decision. It's a conscious decision not to uh, to put yourself in a place of vulnerability. Um, so I was having, I was doing all this work, and uh, you know, I got some really good results, and I did some consulting for the government and helping, you know, um, go and speaking at, at leadership and management conferences and saying, "Hey, look, here's what I do." And people were shocked. They're like, um, "You know, so where's your training?" I'm like, well, I, yeah, here's what I did. Here's my experience. And they're like, so you haven't got a degree in this? I'm like, nope. And they're like, so how do you know that you're doing the right thing? I'm like, well, I'm getting results, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So how like, did you get get like asked to be at these conferences and, and talk in front of people? Or did you just kind of hustle out of it? Um, well, I think when you start getting certain results, when you've got government contracts, people start taking notice. Right. Okay. And actually what people really want to do is they want to find out what you're doing, copy it, and then get some credit themselves. Right. Because I'll be honest with you, Kevin, a lot of the people who are supposed to be the experts aren't getting any results. Yeah. I've noticed that over the years. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like, what? So you're the, the so-called experts, the PhDs, and, and don't get me wrong, I've got clients who are PhDs who are brilliant and have plenty of results. Sure. But there's also people who don't, and they you know, hide away behind, well, I'm worth this much money because I have a PhD. And it's like, well, you haven't got any result to back it up, have you? Yeah. And I think that's a major problem in, in society, but that's another story. That's another mm -hmm. story for another time. <laughs> However, um, you know, I so I would, someone would, I don't know, say, well, you should check out this guy, Luke. He's, he's a bit unorthodox. He doesn't really have a, a very posh accent or any of that stuff, but he's he's getting results and he's got a very interesting take on life. And so I would come and share what I did and I thought it was just like normal. I thought, well, you know, I'm getting these results, surely everyone else is, and, and people weren't. And they yeah. had a whole team and I was still getting, and I was doing this on my own, running my own programs, getting more better results than they were. So I would end up doing some coaching for um, some of these people and saying, look, here's how, what I did. And they would say, well, I also want you to maybe coach me on my, my own psychology, my own fears and limitations. And I, I was kind of shocked at first. I was like, what? Like these people have like fears and limitations? Why? You know, they, they've got everything they need. And it, I think for me, coming from like nothing, it's easy to see uh, what you have because, you, you know, all I had was what I had in my hands. Sure. You know, I had to hustle because that's all I got. You know, I didn't have, I couldn't say, well, I've got my degree in this or that because I didn't. So for them, a lot of people are relying on what, you know, they've done in terms of their credentials and they're hoping that will get, give them, you know, um, a strategy to do something. But that means nothing, <laughs> you know, totally. Um, and, I, and I actually went off and did a degree because someone taught me into it and convinced me that I needed it. And I can tell you this much in the second year. I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing here because I'm way ahead of this. And that's not trying to big myself up. That's just the, re the reality. Sure. I was like, I've been doing this stuff for years. I don't even know what I'm learning. Right. And, and my lecturers were saying the same to me as well. So I think it was that it was the combination of um, being, out, being able to really uh, provide tangible results. People were just saying, wow, you've got results. And, um, you know, I want to I want a piece of that action and I want to know how you're doing it. And so I was getting invited to speak at these, you know, events or getting asked to kind of train other people. But then 
I was getting kind of bored with, you know, doing that kind of same old work. And I, and I wanted that new um, buzz, you know, as right. you might, uh, you know, I said, I've got an addictive kind of personality. So I want that next thing. And so I started saying to my mentor, I think I could coach executive leaders. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, yeah, you've done, you've got some good results over here, but don't try and take off more than you can chew. And that was like a red rag to a bull. I'm like, right, <laughs> you're not telling me I can't do something. I'm going to do it. So I started going online and I, I didn't even have a website or anything. And I started tweeting like executive uh, leaders and saying, hey, I can coach you. And, you know, I think a lot of them just went, who the heck is this cowboy? <laughs> um, <laughs> but some of them responded. And I got, I ended up landing like within, I think, six weeks of that conversation, like a um, uh, senior director from Pfizer. Oh, wow. And uh, that's so the drug like, company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the, okay. the good drug company, if there is such a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, uh, I ended up coaching like these types of people, and they would say, "Wow, the results we're getting are awesome." Can Can I refer you to my friend? I'm like, "Yeah." So I would end up working with you know the head talent acquisition from HSBC New York, and and then you know some leaders from Range Rover and um, Johnson and Johnson, um, the Barclays in the UK, here, and various other people. So then I was doing executive leadership coaching. And, you know, I'd done my degree by this time. So I'd, I understood like what was going on, you know, the psychology behind what I was doing. Sure. Um, but to, like I said, to be honest, aside from understanding it and, you know, understanding the science, really, I was already doing it. I just knew what to call it now. No, totally. And that's fascinating that you got all this rolling just from tweeting. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I still do that right now as well. And I'll, I'll go into this later. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a summary of what I did in terms of the coaching. Um, but how... Um, what, what I'm doing right now. So I also started at the same time working with other businesses because essentially I, here's what I think about this. Um, I'm, I set up my own business, obviously doing the coaching because right. um, I was already doing it for other organizations. And I was basically, I, although I partnered with a nonprofit, I basically ran my own program. Um, but I, you know, I set up my own coaching business just off my, on my own, just through Twitter and then obviously built a website and then started doing other things. And, the one thing I did, which everyone said, like, how on earth are you reaching so many people? Because I ended up reaching like up to 700,000 people. Oh, wow. Online. And and what I did is I just had this thing. I didn't have any, uh, you know, money or ad sort of um, uh, spend. So I just said, well, I need to find a way of reaching my ideal audience for free. And sure. I, I realized you can do it on YouTube. So I started making videos, but, you know, they get a, maybe 20, 30, 100 views. And, you know, you can't guarantee who those are or what they, you know, the people watching it. And then I thought, well, there's got to be a better way of reaching more people. So I can't even remember how I kind of came across that. I, no, no one had told me about it. I just kind of figured it out again. But then I realized it was a thing. I thought, what if I could partner with someone who has a massive audience and promote my content for free to that audience and then... Um, you know, that audience would come and like, you know, ask me to, to work with them. Sure. So I, again, not quite sure how I did it. Again, it's kind of a bit, a bit blurry, but I found this guy who um, had this um, audience that he'd built, you know, organically from scratch, no ads on um, Facebook before Facebook started screwing with, the, um, you know, how many people can see your stuff without paying. Right. And, um I just kind of befriended him, made a connection, and um, I was able to uh, like do a joint venture, strategic alliance, and promote my videos. Um, you know, any any posts I wanted to write, any anything that I was kind of working on, uh, just through to his audience. So with you know, sometimes within five minutes of sending a post, I'd get like I don't know a hundred shares on Facebook. Um, oh wow! By the end of the day, you'd, you'd see four thousand shares of like one video. Or something oh, wow. crazy like that, you know. So I'd send a video out, and then on YouTube, it'd be like, you know, thousands of views. I'd be like, wow. Um, and so, you know, very quickly, I was having all these people going saying, can you coach me? Can you work with me? Can you help me? Can you do this? And so suddenly I realized I was actually quite good at, like, um, doing business as well. And, you know, because I never – I just made a pact to myself. I didn't want to pay for advertising. I was going to find ways of doing it organically. And so I, um, you know, since then, I, I've been um, working with, uh, you know, businesses and helping them too and helping them to grow like that. And uh, again, through my ability to connect with people online, um, 
I kind of stumbled across this relationship um, with this guy who'd recently come out on his own. He used to work. He was he was the leader of a four billion dollar company in the U, uh, the U.S. Oh wow! And he stepped out on his own, set up his own thing, and we just connected. And he said, "Look, I've got um, skill set in this area. You're really good at connecting and you know like coaching people and understanding people's psychology. Why don't we partner up and we'll we'll call it to census?" And so effectively, what we're doing with that is we. We work with people. We help partner with small to medium-sized companies, and um, we help them to um, grow, to scale their business, to create more liquidity, um, to raise capital, or to achieve a lucrative exit strategy. So that's the the, the kind of the pitch, if you like. Sure. Um, and basically, what it means, in essence, is so you know you've got a company over here, um, but you you want to raise some capital, or you just you know you're, you're, you you want to move on you want to do something else and so we will you know through our partnerships and this is like the really the key element is that through relationships that we've cultivated over um between us you know collectively maybe 20 30 years uh we can you know make a phone call or send an email and, and potentially have someone who can buy your company that's awesome um, you know and, and obviously it's a it's, it's way more complicated than that but essentially you know, it, it, that's that's what we're helping people to do. Well, and that gets and it, the ball rolling, right? Sending that first email. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, and so to sense is really, it's a combination of our ability to help scale businesses in a really um, intelligent, strategic way. It's, it's our ability to, you know, create relationships with people who can move the needle very quickly. Right. Um, uh, you know, so... That's what we're doing with the census, and, and it all, it, it's all a culmination, really, of everything that I've done and my business partner's done over the last, um, you know, 10, 15 years. Sure. No, that that's awesome. Um, so what's the URL? I'll post it in the show notes as well, but what's the URL of uh, the census and just for our listeners? So it's the census, uh, www.descensusgroup.com. Uh, okay, and I'll post that online. Yeah, so Desensis is spelled um, D I S E N T S. Okay. Uh, group. So that's that's uh, our, our website. And so if there are people listening who you know you're looking to grow your business, um, you know you're looking to scale it using some really powerful strategies that you you know most people don't really know about, um, or you're looking to you know again raise capital and you, you just haven't got the contacts, you don't understand where to start then we can help, you know? Sure. And, and, and for us, what we're, what we're really interested in, we're, we're, we're not looking for customers, as it were. What we're looking for is, is people we can help. Uh, and that's just, it's the most powerful thing ever. And it sounds a bit, you know, wishy-washy, but it's true. It really is. Like when you're, when you're, we're not looking to, you know, for new clients, people come looking for us. Uh, and we, we look for, you know, quality relationships that we can really add value to. Sure. So maybe let's talk more about, you know, how you, how you go about building these relationships. Okay. Um, well, again, it depends on what, what um, you're looking for. Cause I, I'd like to think that there's, there's so many different relationships. I mean, for example, you and I, you, we, we'd be like peer relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, I'd like to help you. You can help me, you know, you're interviewing me and um, you know, I can help kind of spread your interviews and your, um, your podcast out to all my people. So, you know, there's peers like that. And, and I always say, look, the key thing that people um, get it wrong, and I, you know, I'm still learning. You're still learning. We're all we're all on a journey. Sure. But people get it wrong because they don't know what they want. Yeah. No, I totally so, agree. For, so, for for example, yesterday I looked on LinkedIn. I had over 500 requests. Oh wow. And, and so I was having to sift through all these things. And guess what? It's like, can I add you to my network? Can I, you know, the same generic pre-scripted LinkedIn uh, response that LinkedIn kindly does for you that sucks. Yeah. And. Um, it's like, hey, well, that's great, but I don't really care because you sound just like the other one did. And there's nothing, you know, kind of jumping out at me about you. So really what it comes down to is, is you know, obviously how do, you, how do people position themselves? You know, what is it that they do? What is it that's unique about them? How can they really grab my attention? How can they stand out from the crowd? Uh, and what is it that they want? Yeah? Totally. And so for me, I'm always thinking – you know, is this someone I want to connect with as a peer? And already, what could I do for them straight away? What do I already know that I can help them with? What can I see that they need some help with? Or that I can just suggest that might, you know, add even greater value to them. So what do you do? So when you're reaching out to somebody on LinkedIn, you basically say, here's what I can do for you. And here's kind of what I would like you to do for me, that kind of thing. 
No, I would never. I, I well, it, it depends. I don't typically like to ask, "What can you do for?" Me? Here's what I want you to do for me. Okay. Um, and and you know, it's interesting. On LinkedIn, I do less li- reaching out. I'm usually the person being reached out to. Okay. Um, I do sometimes on LinkedIn. But you got to be careful because LinkedIn, you know, they're a bit crazy. They can block you. Yeah. If they don't know you, and it's like, dude, I'm only trying to be friends. You know. I know. Um, I, I don't understand why it's like you won't let me see your public resume. <laughs> yeah, don't you want to be like you know have some better opportunity presented to you but there you go yeah um, so facebook and twitter are really more powerful in that context so i might go okay so this guy i mean i'm going to give you an example right so there was someone i wanted to connect with um very successful like uber successful in the uk his company started a company from scratch took it to 2.6 billion dollars oh, on, wow. on, on the london stock exchange floated it so I wanted to connect with this guy. He's um, got. He's a bit edgy, so he's the kind of guy. If you if you upset if you upset him and he didn't like you, you know you're done. Okay. <laughs> tells a, tells a couple of people you're you're out you're out you're you're not going to go very far. So I wanted to make sure I didn't blow my chance with him. I didn't want to kind of upset him. So I sent him a message on on Facebook. Hey man, like you know, love what you've done. Hey, do you know X, Y, and Z? I know these people. I'd be happy to introduce you. I think they might. I think they'd really add some value to what you're doing, or you know. In, you might be interested in what they're doing. He's like, yeah, for sure. Boom, we're, we're connected. That's awesome. Then, then I said, right, I, I want, and here's the thing. I did have something I wanted um, to talk with him about. Okay. I wanted to invite him to be um, uh, on my advisory board for one of my companies. Okay. Okay. Because I thought that his insight, he's like probably one of the best like e-commerce guys in the world, like just a genius. So I was like, you know, I, I really would value his insights, but I'm not going to go and just ask him that because he's going to go, so what? I, I don't need you. I've got a thousand requests like this every day. But what I wanted to do first is build a connection with him, build a relationship. So what I thought was, is like, what is it that we have that is in common? And straight away, I discovered that his wife was South American. Well, my wife is from South America too. So I was like, right, bang. That's, a, that's an easy Interesting. One. So you basically so, find a common ground between the two of you. Yeah, for sure. So I said, hey, um, so I'm not, <laughs> and you've got to be careful. I'm not perving on your wife, but <laughs> <laughs> I see that your wife is from, you know, such and such. And, and my wife's from here. Like, how did you meet? Did you, did you meet? You know, and, he, and this, is, this is essential because it's not a yes or no answer. Yeah, yeah. It's having like a real human conversation about exactly. something you both know about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. He could say, oh, this place and that and this and that. But at least he's given me more than one yes or no. Sure. So I asked him this really kind of still open-ended. on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he and he answered, and then I was like, "Cool." And and when was that? When did you meet? And he's like, "Dun dun dun." And we just kept the conversation flowing. And then it was right at the end. It's like, "Hey, dude, um, this was really awesome." He's like, "Yeah, for sure. Really great to connect with you, man. So so much in common." Boom. Now I know that he kind of trusts me and likes me because when we feel that we have something in common with people, well, they, they're like us, right? Sure. Uh, and so we feel like, well, I'm a good guy and the, he seems pretty cool. So, yeah, I think I can I trust that guy. So I said, listen, I've got this thing I wanted to run past you. You know, do you mind if I send you an email? Where's the best place? And he's like, yeah, just send it right here. Bang. Oh, so nice. I got his email and this is within like, I don't know, maybe a day or two of connecting with him. And so then I sent him across the information. He's like, it sounds great. Send me some more. Boom. And, you know, and we just kept the dialogue going. And that's from like cold. I've never met him. I've never spoken to him in person. Wow. Um, and I've done this with other people. So I had another guy I wanted on my advisory board, for example. And this time I managed to interview him first and then uh, found out that he was going to be in London the same time as I was speaking at an event in London. And he'd flown over from the States. Okay. This guy, um, you, if I mention his name, you'd know who, who he was immediately. Sure. Uh, like one of the biggest personal developments or brands in history. And... Uh, so I found out he was going to be speaking at his own event. I said, "Where, where you know, which hotel?" <laughs> and he said, "This hotel." I'm like, "Hey, look, can I come by and talk to you about this idea about this advisory board?" He's like, "Yeah, swing by the hotel." So I went out of my way. I'd get up at like four in the morning to get there because going across London is crazy. And I got loads of trains, got to the hotel, bought him breakfast, and you know, bang, he he said yes. And it, but it, it was something that I had to nurture uh, for some time and build some trust with him. And so I think really, again, it depends on what you're looking for. So when I said, you know, what sort of relationships you're looking for, I mean, the first one is peer, sure. peer to peer. Second, that would be a mentor. Okay. They're more like mentors. If you're asking for like an advisory board or board member, they're mentors, you know, 
Um, and then, you know, you've got another level. You've got someone you might want to do a joint venture or a partnership with. And so that's a different relationship again. So you've got to figure out what's the, you know, how do I package this um, this this context? You know, how do I communicate this uh, with this person? Um, and, and what is it, what's in it for them? What's in it for me? Like how simple can you make it? How clearly and, and concisely can you communicate this to these people? And then obviously another level is customer or client. Sure. Uh, and, and then again, that's another story. You know, you might, and, and I find it's, it's the same, you know, you do something for them that adds value to them. Hey, look, you know, I just noticed that, you know, I was looking on your website and I noticed this, this, and this, and this that you could improve and look, take those ideas, go run with them, or I'd be happy to help you do them. Sure. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Kind of offer them like free advice and say, you know, you can have this, but you know, if you ever need my thoughts or help with this, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like here's the things that you haven't probably, you may not have thought about. I've just noticed them. Uh, you can, you know, go with it, run with it, you know, do those things if you'd like to, or, you know, I'd be happy to help you do it and, and implement them if you'd like me to as well. Okay. So how would you go about contacting somebody if you wanted to be a business partner or, or partner on something with? <laughs> Kind of the okay. same way? Yeah, I mean, like that, that's, it could be the peer to peer. Sure. But obviously, it comes with a bit more, um, you know, uh, responsibility, I'd hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, the same, same exact story with um, the guy that I'm now partnered with. Um, he's in the States, never met him in person. Really? Um, no. Um, and he actually reached out to me about coaching. And I was like, okay, this guy is really very qualified and, has a lot of achievements under his belt. I, you know, let's let's talk. And as I spoke to him, I'm, you know, you got to be very, very quick on your feet. That's the way that I think. You've got to be, you know, I would describe it as you've got to be like Bruce Lee. <laughs> you've got to be ready for anything. You've got to be there, ready and poised to kind of make the right move. And so I was just listening to him talk, and I thought, I don't think this is a me coaching him scenario. I think, you know, he's his credentials are, are phenomenal. Uh, I think, in fact, I would be better positioned to be partnered with him. And, okay. You know, so I just said, look, here's what I see. What do you think about this? Okay. And I said, so you I asked always... him to partner yeah. with you. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I said, look, you're looking for me to coach you, but here's here's some just three. You know, I was taking notes the whole time, listening, just listening, listening. And I went, listen, here's what I'm hearing. Uh, I know we've only just met. It's early days. You don't need to say yes or anything right now. Let's just explore it. You open for that? Because... I'm not asking for a yes right away. I'm just saying, let's explore it. Can I get a yes for that? And he's like, yeah, for sure. Why not? Um, so we explored it for a while. And then, you know, we just found more and more synergy. And so, you know, we, I didn't get a yes straight away, but it was, you know, not that long afterwards. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. It's, it's understanding too how you position yourself. If I position myself as being like a subordinate, someone who needed him, then it would have been like, oh, I don't know about this. Right. Okay. But if I am position myself who has just as much value but in different ways, sure. well, then I'm you know, I'm equally as valuable in that relationship. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, that's that's really good advice. I wow, that's that's a lot to take in. It's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm curious, do you have any other tips for using, you know, social media to kinda get what you want or, you know, connect with the people that you want? Yeah, I mean, let's be real, right? I, I think is how I connected with you. I can tell that story, right? Sure. You, you followed me, I think. Is yep. that right? Yeah, I followed um, you on Twitter. Yeah, and then I think I, I said to you, hey, your, uh, your podcast seems really interesting. Yep. <laughs> and I did that intentionally. Sure. I did it to create the, the conversation, which it, you know worked like a charm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep now we're recording you for the show <laughs> yeah and, and i you know it wasn't like i was like right i'm gonna get myself on this show but i was like hey um i'm always looking at opportunities and it looked to me this is how my brain thinks there's an opportunity staring me in the face you know and i get like maybe 10 of these opportunities every day like this sure so anything that's going to help me grow what i do and help me help someone else why wouldn't i capitalize on that opportunity so you know, I think it's always key to start a conversation. You know, I could just say, well, someone only follow me. Hey, thanks for following me. That's dead. That's finished. Yep. I said, hey, your show sounds really interesting. Why don't you tell me more? Sure. It opens up the conversation, you know? And then, you know, I think you might have said, yeah, you sound kind of cool. What, what do you do? And I was like, okay, here's what I do. And then I think I'd said something along the lines of, hey, look, if, if I can add any value to your show, you know, give, you, give your listeners something interesting to listen to, hopefully, you know, maybe we can, maybe you could have me on. 
or something like that. And I, and I, you know, obviously that might have, I think it was a little bit more polished than that, but essentially, you know, if it, it, the way I positioned it is I'm adding some value to your, sure. to your show. Sure. You know? Yeah. That's basically what happened. We exchanged a few emails. We connected on LinkedIn. We had a quick Skype call a couple of weeks ago. And then it was basically like, let's pick a day to record and tell your story. That's what we're doing right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I can give you another example. I so I wanted to work with um, some big corporate partners, recently, like a, maybe a year or two ago. And so, and and here's something that everyone who's listening should take note of: that using social media now, there is no gatekeepers anymore. You sure. can pretty much reach anyone you want. Yep, you sure can. Yeah. If you want, but the, the key is this, be interesting. If you're boring, no one is going to respond to you. If you sound like everyone else, if your responses and your the way you communicate with them is generic, well, good luck with that. So I always, so I remember I was I wanted to um, connect with these corporate partners. And I mean, I'm talking people like Bentley, Ferrari, anyone like that, you know, you, Apple, you name the biggest brands in the world. And I had, one day I was there and I thought I had this idea. What if I create this product? I could interview like all these kinds of people and the idea was this, I want to interview uh, the HR people and to understand what type of um, graduate they would take on, uh, what, you know, what, sort of, what type of person uh, you know, would get a job with, say, someone like Apple. Like, what would they have to do during the interview to just stand out? Okay, that's really it's interesting. Just, yeah, because this is my thing. This is like always how do I have influence? How do I connect? What's, what, you know, how do I position what, what I do? So I wanted to do this and I want to create this kind of um, you know, training. So, you know, I, I, I figured out, you know, you've got 140 I I characters on a tweet, right? Right. So you've got to get them to pay attention with that many, you know, letters. And I'm like, right, um, hmm, what am I going to say? So I just figured out this thing. And like, this is at 9 o'clock I had the idea. By 11 o'clock I had about 100 of the biggest brands in the world giving me their email addresses, like someone in their company that I should contact to take this forward. Wow. And so, you know, it's it's a, being able to, you know, communicate very um, quickly, move fast, you know, think what is it that that's, that's going to be interesting to them. Sure. And I, I'd said something along the lines of, hey, uh, Google, um, listen, you know, I think it's really important for graduates to, um, you know, have a fighting chance of interview. You know, there's so many people, you know, going for interview, they need to stand out. I'd love to get your um, perspective of what you look for in, you know, top graduates, sure. something like that. It was a bit obviously more concise because it was only a tweet, but literally they all, you know, they jumped at it and they said, Hey, send, let's send you a DM and um, we'll send you, we'll tell you which person you should contact and we'll, let's see if we can move this forward. Sure. No, that's awesome. I, I think I'm curious then, do you reach out to different types of people based on social network. And what I mean by that is where I find Twitter is a little bit more casual, where LinkedIn's mm. a little bit more business-like. Yeah. I think Facebook can kind of go either way, depending yeah. on the connection. Yeah. Um, so, so what are you asking me? Well, uh, do you reach out to, you know, say you want to target somebody specific. Do you reach out on a different network based on kind of what you're looking to, you know, help them with or, you know, what you're looking to get kind of from that relationship? Yes. Yeah. It, it, yes is the short answer. Um, and, and here's why. Uh, so Twitter is probably the easiest to kind of connect to almost anyone. Sure. You, you know, cause most people are on Twitter. Yeah. If they have someone running a Twitter account, that's another story. Cause you don't know always, you know, if someone's kind of the person, you know, is it really Kim Kardashian tweeting? I don't know. Probably is. Cause she's always taking pictures of herself. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, so it, it's understanding, okay, how, what is it I want to achieve? Sure. Is it, do you want it, if you want to retweet then yeah just send them a tweet but if you want to get on the phone with them and you want to build a real relationship then hmm, i'd say facebook interesting out of the out of the out of the three i mean that's really the only three we really think about isn't it you know yeah. maybe google plus maybe unlikely though um facebook it, it, you know it's weird there's I, I, like on my facebook i probably have like around 150 like like a players from silicon valley um, and I literally have never met any of them Interesting. in person. I just connect with them on Facebook. And once you have one connection, you know, that people and you, and you, you comment on posts and you add value and you interact, people start noticing you and they think, yeah, this guy pops up everywhere. Right. Okay. Seems kind of cool. He's, he's adding value to the conversation. He's challenging this. He's, you know, given his perspective and then it's easy once they see, well, he's connected to 20, 30 of my other 
friends I trust. Well, maybe you know he's okay, so I send him a request. Say, hey, do you mind you know do you mind um, connecting? I wanted to you know help you with this, or wanted to run you past this, I wanted to introduce you to that person. Then it, it's easy, you know, um, and you can start the conversation. In terms of uh, LinkedIn, so that's again a different story. So with our with the census, that's more of a LinkedIn thing, right? Okay. Because let's say if you're talking capital or you're talking helping to exit someone or you're talking um, some of the other things that we're doing, it's likely that, uh, you know, a company owner, and that's the people we're trying to address. You know, Facebook is more entrepreneurs. Okay. So people like lifestyle entrepreneurs, there's tons of lifestyle entrepreneurs, tons of tech leaders, but then maybe you're talking something outside of tech. Um, I don't know, for example, like a manufacturing company. Okay. Well, then they're likely to be on LinkedIn. I got uh, you. And the boss will be there and, you know, you can start to find the decision makers. Uh, and obviously 100% corporate, you know, people will be on LinkedIn. Right. Okay. No, that's that's really good advice. Um, Luke, this has been awesome. And I wish we could keep going, but we are out of time, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe just in closing, where can people find you on online i will post the links again like i mentioned but just for our listeners right now do you want to maybe drop all your sites and social media yeah for sure um so if if you go to uh, facebook and you just type in luke havard uh, you know i i should come straight up it should be a picture of me and my my beautiful wife on uh, facebook um twitter again just luke havard i should pop straight up um linkedin uh obviously you've got the decensusgroup.com for right. uh, you know the business growth and, and various other things. If you want to connect with me more personally, just LukeHavard.com. Um, and I'm also, I think we mentioned this, you know, offline. I am doing something right now called the SuperConnectorsSummit.com, and, and that essentially is a summit where I'm interviewing, you know, some of the most connected entrepreneurs in the world. You know, how did they grow their their business from scratch? from being virtually unknown to being a trusted authority in their field of expertise. Uh, and this is anyone from, you know, one of the, one of the most notorious um, concierge firms in, in the world, boutique concierge firms to, um, you know, best-selling authors, uh, you know, through to various other people who are, you know, super connectors in the realms of entrepreneurship. And, and that will be a, a really valuable free resource that can help you know people that are listening to this podcast right now to really hone their skills of connecting and grow their business without um, you know just through through connections really um, so, without having to you know rely on advertising and various other things as well. So when's that coming out? Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm hoping to kind of have the the interviews go live you know from the first of December. Okay. Um, they're all going to be pre-recorded anyway, so but you can hop on and then after. I close the summit, then I will probably end up charging for it. Right. Um, okay. So if if people want to get on it, just get on it now. It's it's going to be free. So if they go to superconnectors dot uh, com, superconnectorsummit dot com, um, there'll be an opt in page. They can opt in. They can get all the the interviews straight to their inbox, um, spam free, and um, yeah, they can learn what the most connected people in the world do. That is awesome. That is a great uh, resource and. You know, Luke, this has been awesome. Thanks again for being on the show, and uh, we'll have to keep in touch. Maybe yeah, do thanks. another one at some point. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, and if there's anyone, you know, like I said, any of my contacts that you'd like to have on, I'd be more than happy to uh, refer them to you, man. Sure, awesome. We can talk about that offline, but this has been awesome, Luke. Thanks again, and uh, we'll be in touch shortly. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks for listening. You can visit past shows at buildingthefutureshow.com. If you're going to the Startup Expo on February 16th and 17th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and want to record an episode, please contact me. The music for the show is by Electric Mantra. Check them out at electricmantra.com. Until next time, keep building the future.